people don't know how they want to receive love and they don't know how to give love. And yes. like we said earlier that the old Expected. wisdom is, yeah, yeah. is is like to love and be loved is the biggest need, but we don't know how to love and how to give love and we carry so much of our baggage from previous relationships and experiences so and we bring them into a new person. So it's like that person treated me like that. That must mean all men or all women are like that. Which means now when I'm with this woman, I'm going to look at her through the lens of the last person that I was and look with. Look for them to, to to create this experience again, right? Exactly. Yeah. So you find either evidence of why this person <laughs> is this way. Yeah. Exactly. And so now you're approaching each person with the baggage of the last person, which doesn't make sense. You're not coming at it from a fresh, new experience with the same lessons for yourself, but we start applying the lessons to the other person. So I think that's the reason why we struggle to have an intimate connection. Yeah. Now, one of the things I talk about in here are the, are the five types of attraction. Yes. And, and the reason why I think this is the best way to attraction figure out- Attraction love, language. No, no, these are the five types of attraction okay. that I talk about. Go ahead. So the five types of attraction are physical, financial, mental, emotional, and spiritual. And I'll explain what I mean by all of them. So physical is obvious. Yep. She or he is hot. Attracted to them. I'm attracted yeah. to them. Financial or wealth. I like what they own. I like what they have. I like what they've achieved. I, I like that he went to Princeton or Harvard. I like right. that she's that a the... scientist or a CEO. I like that she's a supermodel. Like you like their status, right? Mm -hmm. So you're attracted to that. The third thing that we're attracted to is people's mental abilities. This is like when you're attracted to someone's mind. Like you just love the way they think. You love the way they articulate themselves. You love all of that. Like you're attracted to that. The fourth is the emotional. This yeah. is when you're attracted to someone's emotional intelligence. You're like, oh, they're very caring. They're yeah. compassionate. They, supportive. They're supportive. They have these good traits. And the fifth and final one is spiritual, where you're like, you're, you're connected to that person's values on a very deep level, mm. like what they really live by. Now notice the first three, I equate them to chemistry. And the last two I equate to compatibility. So the first three are chemistry and most of us get involved in a relationship based on the first three. But here's the issue. You can feel chemistry multiple times per day. You can feel it with the receptionist. Right. You can feel it with your personal trainer. You can feel it with the barista at the coffee shop. You can feel it with the waiter or the waitress. The spark. The spark. You can feel that anywhere. Like you can find someone attracted by one of those qualities every single day. And the challenge is we get into a relationship based on simply one of the first three. And there's nothing wrong with that as a starting point. It just can't be the end point. And so what we do is we keep convincing ourselves that the first three of chem chemistry is more powerful than the last two of compatibility. And we're letting chemistry do the heavy lifting. We can't. And it can't. We're, we're making chemistry do the heavy lifting, the heavy work, the like pull and push and like, okay, like you, you just take care of this. That's why so many people rely on good sex to save a relationship. You know, they always be in conflict. Totally. If the values and the compatibility are not there and you're relying on chemistry, there'll always be some conflict. Always. Yeah. And, and chemistry really easily is those top three and which is good to have. So you should, but my point you is- You need to have both. You need to have both. But you can't just say, because I'm mentally attracted to how that person thinks, that's good marriage material. Mm. That's not good enough. You can't say because that, because some, we make broad generalizations. We say things like, oh, because he or she has a top degree from a top college or a business school and they're at a top company, they must be really kind, loving right, and organized. It's like, what? Right. Like, how did you just- a good parent, yeah. Yeah, must have had a good parent. How did you just draw that parallel? And so that's the way I would talk about entering a relationship wow. is it can start with the first three, but don't let it end without the last two. Mm, yeah, have the emotional and the spiritual, the values. Correct, that has to align for a real long lasting relationship. Uh, I feel like I could do this for another three <laughs> Me hours. Me too, man. This is amazing. So um, good. I wanna finish with one, uh, yes. one thought about service because you live a life of service. I feel like my mission is to be of service to you. You are 100%. In my business, in my relationships, with my friendships, it's all about service for me as well. And this is a, I think it's a quote from the Bhagavad Gita, is that what it is? The, Which one uh, is it? Plant trees. No, so this this one is like a, a famous statement that we, yeah, statement, yeah, yeah, that we share, yeah, yeah. Well, you say, plant trees under whose shade you do not plan to sit. I remember you told yeah, me that. This one's from the Bhagavad Gita, yeah. You told me that a couple of years ago, and I remember yeah. that really blew my mind because in business, when I started out, I think it was a lot of like, okay, let me do this for you and you do this for me. Let's do reciprocal type of stuff. 
uh, I was in the online marketing world where it was about joint ventureships. It was about affiliate marketing and I'll do this and then you promote me, right? And then I started to shift it. When I got into the podcast seven years ago, I said, I'm just going to bring on people I like and I'm just going to serve. If it comes around, cool. If not, cool. And it's, it's hard, I think, to switch that mentality, but it's so rewarding to come from a place of giving and service to literally wanting to see other people succeed, whether they help you or not in return. Mm -hmm. How do we get to that place of that mindset when we're like, but I really need some help right now and I really want someone to support me in return and I don't want to give all my energy to someone if they're never going to give me anything in return. How do we balance that? Yeah, no, that's such a smart question because I think the challenge is that we become overly compassionate often to people in a certain way. So, so what I mean by that is mm -hmm. being compassionate and being giving isn't about spending your whole day with one person who needs your attention and affection if your purpose is to do something different. So for example, you're putting out this podcast, mm -hmm. you put out video content, you write books. This is serving lots of different people in lots of ways. And you're not expecting, apart from the person buying the book right. and, and getting the value from it, you're not really expecting them to do anything for you, mm -hmm. right? You're not asking them to come and champion for you if they don't want to. So you're already planting those seeds. You're already sharing in that way. And I think the mistake we make is when we are overly compassionate to one person and we're doing it expecting that they're going to do something back, right? So the only so way when to, we're, don't be overly compassionate expecting something in return. Yeah, don't just just if you see just yourself don't do that if you're going to just yeah. don't do that if you're yeah. going to feel that. And yeah. and that's okay. Like that doesn't make you less compassionate. It doesn't make you a bad person. Like if I don't want to and and I have rules about there are certain people in my life that I don't ask for favors. Mm -hmm. Because I don't ever want to be in a position where I'm having to ask them because yeah. not that they wouldn't do it or whatever. I just don't want to do that. It's just not who I am. And it's like, but that's fine. And there are certain people in my life that I won't give to because I know they're going to keep asking for stuff. Right. And so you have to protect yourself. And I think self-protection and being honest with yourself is the best way. So the, the, my favorite analogy in this is if someone's drowning in the ocean, if you're fit and healthy and you're a lifeguard, great, you can go and save them. But if you're not, you might need to call the real lifeguard to come and help them out. Right. Right. And that's what real compassion is. Real yeah. compassion, if you can't help someone, if you're feeling toxic one day, you're feeling negative one day, you're feeling you're not really giving from your heart, it's better to introduce them to someone or find someone else who can help them than to go in there with yeah. all these toxic emotions and now you're expecting them to live return up, the favor return the favor. It is, yeah. It's better to not do it. If you're gonna do something and in your heart of hearts, you're actually feeling bitter and regretting it, it's better not to do it because guess yeah. what? You weren't compassionate when you did it with that intention. Mm -hmm. Compassion is about intention. It's not about the result. Like two people could give the same amount to charity. One person gives it for PR. One person gives it because they care about the kids. Who's happy? the person who gave it for the kids. Right. The person, both people's money had the same impact. But the intention is what defined what happened. So if you're begrudgingly going out there and helping someone, and in your heart of hearts, you're like, oh, I can't believe they asked me. Who are they? Like, I don't even like them. Like, they never helped me. And then you help them. That, guess what? That's not compassion. Yeah. Protect yourself. Deal with it. Deal with that toxic emotion. So I don't help people that when I feel like that. And I give myself that that space. You just say no, or no, yeah, I'm, I just I'm say no. Yeah, I can't. Well, I'll be honest with them. I'll say I, uh, in, honest in the best way that you can. Of, I don't think I can support you on this because I don't, I don't feel right about it. Or it doesn't yeah. make sense to me, or whatever it it's is. Not like right fit, right? it's not the right fit. And I think that's actually stopping yourself from being a people pleaser. Yes. Because we we actually are not compassionate. We're just people pleasers. We actually just want people to think we're like magnanimous and amazing. So we'll go and go to every, you know, everything to support everyone. But it's we're like... We're resentful people pleasers. Exactly. We please, and then we're resentful that we had... Exactly. Didn't get what we wanted. And then now we want to make them feel guilty for not yeah, doing yeah, it yeah, back. So I make a conscious effort to support the people I love, yes. to, to make an effort with the people I love and do more there. And that's, that's fine. Your compassion doesn't... You don't have to be this overarching person who's like doing it for everyone like right, that's right. that's part of the journey it's yeah. going to take time to get there of course if you want even more videos like this one click on the boxes over here now i'm really excited to let you know that you can now pre-order my new book think like a monk and you can click here right now to do that pre-order it today